But here's my question. Let's start with Jared Kingston. And I know somebody's like, why, why, why are we starting with Jared Kingston? He's a fascinating player to me that the 49ers have a lot of depth at the guard spot. But he kind of flashed in this preseason game a little bit. So, Ant, walk me through your thought on 49ers rookie guard Jared Kingston. Yeah, so it's interesting that Jared Kingston, you know, comes from a complete pass blocking background. Uh, when you look at his time at Washington State, that's pretty much what he did. Mike Leach, baby. And he was good. I mean, he was really good at pass blocking. If there was one area you saw coming out of college, that was it. And I think we've seen that continue. When it comes to pass blocking, he's done a good job. And I think this is Chris Furster, him and Dominic Pooney. They went and got pass blockers who they're trying to develop as run blockers. I think Jared Kingston's very good technique-wise pass blocking. My concern is run blocking and being able to hold up. If you went, you know, I know you went through the film, John, and you saw there's a lot of times the defensive lineman really did a great job getting into his chest plate, getting separation, and then being able to disregard him and, and get ready or get rid of, rid of him, disengage, get into there, into the get the running back. To me, it wasn't great uh, as far as run blocking. Pass blocking, I thought he held up. I think that's the big question mark for the 49ers with a bunch of decisions, but I think with Kingston as well. How much better do they think he can run block? It, it, how much better can he get over the next month to be able to help this team? And I think if he could prove that he's a better run blocker, maybe he has an outside chance. I just think it's going to be really tough for him to make this roster with so many good interior offensive linemen. It, it's crazy depth at that guard spot. And shout out to my man, David. He says, you know, Forrester had some interesting words on Kingston this morning. I just finished this clip. So here you go. Here's 49ers offensive line coach, Chris Forrester, like 10 minutes ago, talking about the rookie. All the time he's improving. I, the thing I love about these young guys, John Lynch and I were talking about this morning is, is these guys are really, they're working hard to improve and they've made, they've made some good strides. That's not, it's a tribute to them, not to me. And we just do what we do. We go out there and do the same thing every day, but these guys have grabbed onto it and he, he has gotten better. The things that we saw that were limitations with him, um, were, we felt were fixable. And so he's been able to fix some of them. It's still not consistent, uh, but it's gotten better. So there were things that were, they get addressed, you know, and, and we addressed them and he's, he's addressed them, which is good. Sometimes it's hard to break a habit. And we've talked about it in here before where, you know, those, those in a game, when you start creating bad habits are hard to break. And these guys over the course of their college career have some bad habits that you have to break. And, and the things he had wrong, he's really fixed. And so that's helped elevate his game every week. I like to hear that. And I, I'm going to be honest. If I, my favorite coach to listen, talk is Chris Forrester by a mile. Are, are you, do you agree? I love the tangents he goes off on. Sorry, talking yeah. 96 bucks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, oh. no. It, Chris Furster's got to be uh, the best. It used to be Mike McDaniel, and then Mike McDaniel went to Miami, and then it became Chris Furster. And the amount of insight that he gives you is different than every other coach. Like, he just gets into it. He doesn't care. He's going to say more than he's supposed to, and I absolutely love that about him. But he's an old ball coach, and I think that's what we all kind of gravitate to. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's he's pretty awesome. Now, let's stick with the offensive line. A shout out to uh, Kia the Boseman for subscribing over at the Forty Hours Cutback. That is incredible. If you guys haven't head over there yet, what are you doing? Go type it on YouTube. Forty Niners Cutback. Hit that subscribe button. Support positive content. It's out there. Let's go. Now, talk to me about John Feliciano, and I want to kind of use this conversation to talk about health and kind of that center rotation. What do you see with big number 55? It's been a weird off season. Yeah, it's tough for John Feliciano. I kind of thought when we were coming into camp that he was the starting right guard slash competing at center, potentially for that spot. If Burford showed that he had improved from last year and got more consistent, but he's just been so inconsistent with being in the lineup. Uh, barely at training camp. We only seen him a, a few days that he was out there. Knee irritation. I, I don't know exactly what that means. I just know it means he's not out there. And with him not being out there, he's kind of starting to fall as far as the depth chart. We know Burford's going to be back here pretty soon with the broken hand. Dominic Pooney's played really well. And an opportunity to overtake Jake Brendel, I think, has been lost a little bit by Feliciano. I think he really did have a shot, especially with Brendel missing time with knee tendonitis. I think it would have been great for the 49ers to have a center that could anchor the way that John Feliciano does, but I just don't think that's possible now. So now he's looking like he's a rotational uh, backup the way that he was last year, and that's crazy to say considering he was probably the second-best offensive lineman down the stretch last year. 
And the 49ers really counted on him. In fact, if he would have been in that Super Bowl game in the fourth quarter in overtime, the 49ers may have won that game. That's how significant he was. And now he's going to be a backup. It's crazy. I love Dominic Pooney, but just to think that John Feliciano coming back for his last ride, per se, at 34 years old, that he's going to be a backup is is hard for me to kind of grasp at this point. Now, it seems like most of his snaps came at center in training camp. Like it was like him or um, Jake Brindle out there a lot with the ones. We saw some Zakel. We'll talk about that in a second. But like, what do you think the first snaps of Feliciano are going to be? Are they going to be at center? Or are they going to be a guard? I think it's going to be at guard at this point. I, I think that the way that the 49ers are trending, I think they like what they're getting from Nick Zakel. And I think they're finally starting to look at him again the way that they did originally when they drafted him as potentially a future starter at the position, a young guy who they could develop. And it, it took a while for it to click, but it looks like it's starting to click now. With Feliciano, I think he could do it at a high level right now. I think he's a better center right now than anyone else on the team, but I don't know if they're going to actually let him take that Jake Brendel job. I think Chris mm-hmm. Furster wanted to flirt around with it, and we'll see what happens. Maybe Feliciano gets back out there on the field and proves it. But I think if he doesn't play in the preseason, it's going to stay status quo, and it's going to be Jake Brendel, and Feliciano is going to have to wait for an injury to get an opportunity. Uh, that's crazy to me. All right, well, let's let's dive that in. Here's another comment from the head coach. This, or Sorry, from the 49ers offensive line coach. Just talking about the rotation at backup center spot. Here's Chris Forster. You have Barch and Zakel that are battling out with Nugent there as well. You got three guys there that can do it and uh, uh, that will work the backup, and we'll see how it plays out as the year goes on. Zakel obviously took the starting reps. Um, um, I would say that if you looked at him and said, what's Sakel's strengths and what Barch's are, I think that Sakel's probably playing a little bit better. He's, he's center suited him better. And guard probably suits Barch better. And not that either one of them play center. That's the first game Zakel's ever played in a game center, and it was that was it uh, in college anywhere. So, and I'd say that. So I give him the edge right now, but they're both right there because then if you move Zakel to guard, Barch to center, it just depends on what you're looking at. You look at say, okay, one of those guys will be your third or fourth guard, backup center. It's just it's a lot of pieces we're moving there. But right, that's where it sits right now. Yeah, it's crazy to me. His very first game ever taking snaps at center is against the starting Titans defense. And what were your thoughts when you went through the tape? I obviously did, but I'm gonna I want to keep those reserved till I hear what Big Ant's got to say. Yeah, you know, I I watched it live because I was very interested to see 63. I saw him towards the end of training camp, especially the last day. You were there. I was sitting next to Brad Graham, and we were. I kept saying, hey, Zakel had another good rep. Zakel had another good rep. And so we were kind of watching him. And then so when he got in the game, I wanted to focus in on him, Dominic Pooney. That was a part of my normal look. I thought he looked fantastic. And when I watched the, the film back, I thought, you know what? There wasn't – everything wasn't perfect, but compared to last year – this was an entirely different Nick Zakel. He looked confident. He looked comfortable. He was going to the right spots. His technique was a lot better. In run blocking, he actually got to the second level. Uh, so I thought that was good. So overall, I thought this was the first time officially that Nick Zakel put him in a opportunity to make this team. And I thought that, hey, this guy could be the backup center. And we could finally have somebody we're comfortable with uh, that anchors a little bit better than uh, Jake Brendel, which we know we need and is blocking a little bit better as far as the run game. So it was a great showing by Zakel. He has to keep it going, though. He has to do well against the Saints. He has to do well against the Raiders. Uh, but if he can build consistency on what he did, I think it's great news for the 49ers and for Nick Zakel. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I think if there was an issue with Brindle early, it would be Feliciano or Barch in there. But if it's like after the bye week, then I think they want Zakel. I don't know. That's just my own take on it. But, like, I don't know. I'm not the biggest Jake Brindle guy. I know he gets the calls. I know you got the continuity. I know you got all that. He's Forster's homeboy, all that. But it's just like the ceiling on Jake Brindle's play in the run game is almost catastrophic, which is crazy whenever you look at what Christian McCaffrey did and all those things. But for those of you that watch film, you would see two to three runs a game that would go for five yards that very easily could have been 40-yard rushes because he just can't stick blocks at the second level. He can get there every time. It's just he just cannot anchor a block or let, <clears throat> excuse me, latch on 
at that second level. Uh, Kitty says, yeah, Jake Brindle, undrafted free agent. And sh- props to Jake Brindle for reaching what he has, but it's just like he's at his ceiling. Can he get better at this point? I severely doubt it. And I do think that Zakel, maybe even Ben Barch, both have a higher ceiling. It's just can their floor be as high? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. I think both of those guys, it's tough, especially for Barch. He just came into the system last year. Uh, so he's having to adjust. Adjusting to center is a little bit more difficult. And I think that's why you're hearing Coach Chris Furster talk about he's a little bit better at guard. Nick Zakel already went through all that trying to play guard last year, and it didn't really work out. Now he's at his natural position of center. This is what everyone thought the intelligence coming out of Fordham, he was going to be able to slide right into that spot. And the body never matched the mentality. The body never matched the football IQ until now. Now he's finally putting it together. So those two guys are interesting because I think they don't play exactly the same, but they have a similar makeup. Uh, They both were tackles in college. They're both highly intelligent. They're very versatile. So deciding between the two is going to be interesting. But I think Chris Verster's locked into this. Nick Zakel is the better center. Ben Barch is the better guard. And I think that if Zakel can keep it going, I think he has a shot to make this team, which I didn't think before, because it doesn't sound like John Feliciano, according to Furster's comments, is actually in the mix for backup center, which I thought was interesting. 